Hi, I'm Peter Boudreau. I'm an occupational therapist at the Rehabilitation Institute of Oregon here in Portland. And today I'm going to be showing how to use a electrical stim device on, let's say, a stroke patient to help their arm recovery. Specifically in this video, how to help the uh, muscles that open the fingers and close the fingers. And in general, you want to have, after a stroke or let's say a brain injury, a very comprehensive rehab program covering lots of areas. If you look on the other videos on this same website where you found this, you'll see about six or seven other hopefully helpful videos about helping your a person with a stroke recover faster and uh, more thoroughly. So a good stroke program, plus the, the research shows a good stroke program, plus e-STEM will maximize the recovery. The device I'm going to be using today is the Twin Stem 3, which is not very expensive and you can find it online. Uh, so we've, um, our patients have found this to be helpful and several will buy one of these. Usually insurance doesn't pay for it but they'll buy one of these, get some instructions from the therapist, and be able to use it at home. Um, so I'm going to walk through how to program this and uh, show you how it all works. Uh, before you start, uh, a therapist should get a doctor's order to use electrical stimulation. Uh, or if you are going to try to do this yourself, you should talk to your doctor first. If a person has a pacemaker, they should avoid using the electrical stimulation. That would be one precaution. Um, so the twin stem, to turn it on, you're going to press this button. And this particular device will do both TENS pain treatment, uh, treatment and also electrical stim. If I was going to do a TENS treatment, which I'm not today, but I would just press the M button and you can see it jumped over to the TENS treatment. I press the M and it jumps over back over to the EMS, electrical mus muscular stimulation. Now there's three different, it says S, A, and D. If I wanted to stimulate, let's say my finger extensors and my elbow extensors to get this motion, I would have it in S mode, it'd be synchronous. Or if I was just doing one muscle all by itself, I would do it in S mode. And you'll see another video on the same website where you found this where I'm just doing that uh, set of, that muscle. If I had it on A mode, that would be alternating. So let's say I'm doing uh, biceps and triceps. It would stimulate the biceps, it rests, it stimulates the triceps, it rests. The one I'm going to show today is uh, on uh, delay mode. In this one, it's going to be opening my hand and closing my hand in kind of this pattern, which is fairly functional. So if a person was eating, trying to eat some grapes with their hemi arm, that might be the best mode for that. To change from one mode to another, uh, you would press, uh, you can see the D, um, I press the S button, you can see the D is flashing. If I wanted to switch it over to S mode or A mode, any of these silver buttons would move that around. But we're going to keep it on delay, the D mode. I press S again, and now this little T right here is flashing, and uh, I want the rotation to be like an eight second rotation. That'll work for this particular setup. So you want to move that number either with your down arrows or, or up arrows to eight seconds. I press S again, and this little clock right here is flashing. And here I can set how long the first treatment session would be. And usually the first session is about 15 minutes. If things go well, you can increase that by 5 minutes, then 5 minutes more, you know, 20 minutes, then 25, and so forth. Uh, the more stimulation, the better. The benefit of electrical stimulation is it will 
uh, prevent the muscle from getting too uh, weak from lack of use. It will help with swelling just because there's more movement and it will help with the brain muscle nerve kind of reconnection which is what you're looking for. I press S again and now it's a PW is flashing which in other words uh, pulse width. How long is each little electrical impulse and we'll put it at 300 microseconds. So if I wanted it to be 290 I'd go down but I would start at 300. Press S again and the PR is flashing right now and the good starting point for that is 35 pulses per second. So it's going to be 300 microseconds long, 35 pulses per second of this electrical stimulation. If it was higher, up, at, up to 40 or so, it would be a stronger impulse, but also it would wear out the muscle faster. Press S again. Uh, and the ramp is flashing right now. And for the purposes of doing this activity, uh, two seconds is a good ramp up. It's how fast we're going to go from relaxed to fully extended. Press S again. It's going to have a five second contraction and about a five second relaxation because while this muscle is contracting, the muscles that do this are going to be relaxing and vice versa, just back and forth, back and forth. Press S again and we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to stimulate the extensor muscles first. So I've got, and I'm, this is channel one here that's going to be on the extensors. And I've picked two two-inch electrodes. And the first time I did it on myself before we started, I had it too far this way. And when it stimulated, it moved my wrist this way. So I moved it over a little bit. So there may be some experimentation you have to do to find the best spots for the electrode placement. They usually should be at least an inch apart. If it's too far apart, the stimulation may go down to the flexors and you get the opposite effect. So this is a pretty good distance right here for this. When you put on the electrodes, the skin should be dry and clean. Uh, you shouldn't have lotion on ahead of time. Also, just a, a one bit of advice is if the patient has uh, they're well hydrated, they're drinking enough water, the, the device will work better. If they're dehydrated, there's less fluid in the tissues to kind of conduct the electricity. So I'm going to have my arm in this position and start. Now at this point, I can feel some tingling right under the electrodes. And the machine is doing that right now. Now, if I did this with my patients and I had this response, I would be pleased with that. I've got a nice wrist extension, nice finger extension, and the thumb looks great. So this looks like a good placement for the electrodes. Now, as soon as this relaxes, I'm going to stimulate the muscles that close my hand. So that looks pretty good. Now, once this screen goes from blue to green, it will go into its opening and closing routine. Right now, it's kind of trying to do both at the same time, which is not what you want. But as soon as the programming period is over, which takes about a minute or two, so it's kind of doing it right now Okay, now the screen is green, and you'll even see the numbers. Like right now, you'll see that the numbers for extension are up, and now for flexion. And it's just going to keep doing this for the next 15 minutes. So it's stimulating that muscle right there. And now it's stimulating this muscle right here. And it feels very tingly in my hand right now. Now, if I had this electrode too far over, 
it might stimulate the thumb too much and I'd have this, which isn't functional. So I want, what I'm going for is my thumb touching my forefinger just like that. Now when the patient is doing this, um, it's doing it passively, so what you would be working for is trying to get a more active, intentional component to this. In other words, if it's closing, maybe try closing a little bit more with their own effort, but especially when it's opening, see if they can open even bigger. Now let's say I'm here and I want, I want to get more extension, like it's not opening as far as I want. You'll see on the screen a little key just below the 1 of the 13 there. Uh, if, I press, if I press the up arrow, nothing will happen. To unlock it and turn up the juice, I press the down arrow. That will unlock it, decrease the juice by just one unit, and then I would increase it. So you have to go down to go up. Or let's say it's on, but it's a little too intense, and the patient says, that kind of hurts a little. Then you would press down, and then you could just go down to a comfortable level. Uh, the other quick uh, bit of advice, if let's say you're doing this with a patient, and they're saying, ow, 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 you would just pull the plug, and that will cut off the electricity. The other way to cut off the electricity pretty quick is to press the down arrow and the M, and that will cut the uh, stimulation pretty fast. So um, what I would do once I have, this looks fairly good on me. If I had this on my patient, I would be pretty satisfied because I've got some nice finger opening and the machine's doing that. and the machine's doing that right now. So my next thing would say, well, let's put this into a functional activity. So let's say the patient liked grapes and can eat grapes. It's not off their uh, diet level. So I might put the object in a reachable location, have the fingers open, and then it's stimulating my flexors now. So now the machine is actually holding that grape. And I'm working on releasing. So the machine is opening my hand there. So you're working on grasp and release. That was me doing that. So that's opening. And now closing. Now where the forearm and hand is, may affect how much it's opening and closing. Like my hand closes better if it's palm up versus palm down. So you may want to have, let's say you're not getting exactly what you want, you may say, well, what if their arm was bent or straight? In general, you'll get the fingers to straighten out better if the elbow is straight and the palm is down. In general, you'll get the fingers to close better if the elbow is more bent and the palm is up. So you can see for me that's certainly true. Now the other thing that I would do with my patient, again, assuming they could eat grapes or it could be a piece of toast or anything that is uh, about this size is good, is then have, if they didn't have the biceps to uh, move their hand to their mouth, is maybe have their strong arm move it in this direction. You'd have to time it just right so they've got it, they're moving to their mouth, and hopefully they can get hold of it before the extension happens. If this is too fast, you may want to put it on a six and six, you know, on for six, off for six. So the five and five is not a magic number, uh, but that's what we have found to work pretty nicely. So this is the way to use this uh, twin stem device to stimulate the muscles and start to get these, uh, in particular, the muscles that extend the fingers and extend the wrist tend to be 
the slowest muscles to recover. Usually patients get a little bit of grasp fairly early. So um, the other thing is if they grasp too hard, sometimes these muscles are overactive and these weaker, smaller muscles can't compete. So often I'll have these muscles go for maybe about five minutes just to energize that muscle. And when this muscle is on, your brain is saying, okay, these muscles should relax just so these muscles can do their job. So I hope that is helpful. Uh, again, you might benefit from seeing the other videos on the same website. In the future, I'm hoping to do another video on how to use this device to help with the subject's shoulder. And um, so we'll do that. The other thing I will show is in the future is how to use this device for pain management with the TENS treatment. So thank you very much.